Hi, I'm Adam Jones with Viavi Solutions. What we're going to discuss in this video today is the items that you need to have set up on your EasyCap system for basic EAS compliance. Today, we are going to discuss how to ensure that your EasyCap system is in compliance with the current FCC requirements. This video will not cover outputs or distribution, as that can and does vary significantly from site to site based on their particular architecture. The items we are going to cover are EAS radio sources, selecting the appropriate areas or FIPS codes for your system, selecting EAS events to forward, setting up your automatic RWT or required weekly test, verifying that iPods is being monitored. So once you log into your EasyCap system, you're presented with the following screen. And one thing I want to point out is that I'm currently running version 3.03.1. While this may not be the current version, it is the version that we're going to discuss today. And if you're running a previous version or the not current version, I highly suggest that you go to our website and download and install the latest version of firmware. That ensures compliance and that all features are working as they should. So first off, let's configure the EAS radio sources. So you'll navigate to the configuration menu and select your audio slash radio sources menu. This will bring up the configuration screen and you're first presented with channel one. Most EAS boxes will have three radio inputs and then channels four, five, and six will be available to you for external radio receivers or we have installed a secondary radio card. Some radio only boxes will just have radios one, two, and three, and then channel four available to you as an external input. To configure what channel does what, you would simply select your audio source and choose between disabled, external audio input, or internal radio receiver. For the purposes of this video, we're going to select internal radio receiver. The next thing that you'll do is you'll give the source a friendly name and then you will select the appropriate band and frequency for that source. You'll continue and do the same things for channel two, and if applicable, based off of your location's EAS plan, you may need to configure input channel three and above. After you've hit accept, this will save those changes that you've made. If you'd like, at that time, you can go back select the appropriate channel and hit preview audio. We will record a sample of the received audio and you can play that back through your browser to verify that you're receiving those radio stations properly and clearly. The next thing we want to do is select the appropriate locations for events that we want to respond or forward. So I'm in the state of Indiana, so I'm going to select Indiana from the drop-down list. And then based off my counties, I'm going to select Marion and Hancock. Now, in addition to that, because sometimes events, especially ones that would come in from FEMA or from the president, aren't going to be for specific lo you know, locations in Indiana. They'll be for the entire state. Also, our required monthly test is for the entire state. And so I'm going to select all of Indiana as well. Now, this does not mean that I respond to and will forward any event that comes in with an Indiana FIPS code. It has to specifically contain the all of Indiana FIPS code. In addition to that, I will respond to alerts for Hancock and Marion County, Indiana. If you need to select more areas based off of if you're a broadcaster, where your broadcast footprint is, or if you're a cable IPTV, you know, that type of operator, you'll want to select all the counties that you have uh, service in and make sure that you select the all of and then your particular state as well. The next thing we want to do is EAS events. Now we will monitor for and log any event that we receive on our radio inputs and through our iPods source. But what you're doing here is you're selecting the events that you would like to forward or send out to your, your customers or your listeners or viewers. And as an example, 
we will select required monthly test because that is required by the FCC. We will enable the event by check marking the box. And like an NPT, if you would like that event to be processed live, meaning we don't receive the event, record it, and then forward it, uh, you would simply select the process as a live event. Now currently the only event that you need to check mark this box for is the NPT so that it is processed like an EAN, and that is the way the regulations are written. The RWT does not need to be enabled. Now, what that means is that we will log any weekly tests that we receive, but you're not required to forward those. You are required to forward a weekly test that you have originated yourself. We'll get to that in a minute. In addition to that, you'll want to do the child abduction emergency. And you'll also want to do the NPT. You'll want to enable that. So you'd scroll down, find the national periodic test, enable it, check mark process as a live event, and then hit accept. The EAS options window, this is where you're going to set up your, your RWT. So the first thing we'll do is we'll check mark the locations that we want to send within that test. And then we'll want to set up when we send it. Now it does need to be randomized. And so I'm going to set mine up, as you can see here, from Sunday to Saturday. And then I'm going to do it late at night, so from midnight to 4 a.m. And if I wanted to enable a secondary slot, to, to send the message in. Now that doesn't mean I'll send it twice, it just simply means that my encoder has two time slots to choose from. I could do that. But for this, this, these purposes, I'm just gonna hit save. And now my RWT is set up and, and ready to go. So the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that iPause is being monitored. Now all EasyCap units ship with iPause already being pre-configured to work. And you can verify that simply by going to the Operations menu, clicking on Alert Status. Now, the first thing you'll see on this screen would be anything that's currently happening. If an event is being recorded or is coming in, you're going to see that. If an event is being forwarded out to your viewers, you're, you'll see that here. The next thing is EAS Input Status. And I can see that on two of my three inputs, I have Signal, and I'm actively monitoring them. This third one shows no signal. I need to check my RF connections. And the last tab is my cap feed status. And this is gonna, I'm gonna see here that iPause is being monitored. It successfully pulled it. And when it did pull, it saw that there was a message on the iPause site, but it did not apply to me. And so I see not passing state filter equals one. This is normal and it's to be expected since iPause is a national site. Now, if iPause was not being monitored, I may not see anything here or I may see some errors or failed polls. For this video, we'll, we'll examine what you need to do if you don't see anything here. We would move to the Cap Sources menu, select the iPause Atom feed, and at that point, we would need to add a feed. The only items that you need to add, the first one under description is a friendly name that lets you know what it is. Leave the URL blank because we will already compile that for you. Authentication, make sure that use default iPods pin is, is selected. And then under signatures, you can either have do not verify signatures selected or you can use any of the other options. Log if a signature is invalid. So if the SSL handshake doesn't, doesn't happen correctly, we'll log it, but still monitor for alert, alerts. Or you can reject messages if the signature is invalid. Now for my purposes, since I'm not live to any customers, I just always leave mine set at do not verify signatures. But you need to make your own decision on that. So that concludes basic EAS compliance. You can look for other videos to go into more in-depth and more details of, on your particular questions. Thank you.